Imagine standing on a cliff, staring at a tsunami that hasn't hit yet. It's massive, dark, and impossible to stop. Now imagine someone steps forward, not to stop it, but to build a lifeboat. So that when it hits, humanity still has a chance. That's what psychohistory is. It's not about stopping the collapse. It's about surviving it and maybe even rebuilding something better on the other side. Harry Seldon, the man who gave birth to this idea, knew what was coming. He stared into the heart of the Empire, saw the corruption, the rot, and the silence between the stars. And instead of panicking, he started calculating. At its core, psychohistory isn't about predicting the future for individuals. It's about predicting the future of civilizations, entire galaxies full of people. Not by spying, not by mind reading, but by math. Selden saw humanity like a river. Individuals are drops, but the current, the flow of billions, can be predicted. He built a new kind of science, a mix of mathematics history, psychology, and probability. It was based on a few key ideas. First, you need a huge population, billions of people, for the math to work. Second, those people can't know you're watching them. The moment someone knows they're part of the equation, they change. They behave differently. Third, you need long time scales, decades, centuries, to see the patterns unfold. With these tools, Selden saw the fall of the Galactic Empire like a shadow on the horizon. It was coming, and there was no stopping it. Not by any army, not by any emperor. But he also saw a path through the darkness. He called it the Selden Plan. To understand how bold this was, picture this. The Galactic Empire had ruled for over 12,000 years. No one believed it could fall. But Selden did. He predicted that after its fall, the galaxy would descend into 30,000 years of chaos, wars, poverty, ignorance, a second dark age. But he had a plan. If he could guide key events, nudge civilization just enough at just the right moments, he could shorten the chaos. Instead of 30,000 years in the dark, maybe only a thousand years. That's where the foundations come in. The first foundation, set up on the remote planet of Terminus, was meant to preserve knowledge, books, science, technology, but that was only part of the truth. Secretly, Selden established a second foundation, too, hidden somewhere else, full of people trained in mental abilities and psychohistory itself. While the first foundation kept the lights on, the second would quietly steer civilization back to stability. But the people of the galaxy didn't know this. The key to psychohistory's success was secrecy. If people knew they were being guided, they'd resist. That's why the plan became a myth. Selden became a prophet, and the foundations became holy missions. Each time a crisis came, wars, revolts, invasions, a hologram of Selden would appear from the vault saying, this was expected, here's what to do. To the people, it felt like magic. To Selden, it was just math. For a while, it worked. The first foundation survived attack after attack, see, using technology and trade to grow stronger. But psychohistory had a fatal flaw. It couldn't account for outliers, rare individuals who could dramatically change the course of history. And then came the mule. He was one man. But he broke the plan. The mule had powers psychohistory couldn't foresee. He could manipulate emotions, make people love him, fear him, worship him. Where others would need armies, he needed only a word. Entire planets fell under his control without a shot fired. In the books, he nearly destroyed everything Selden built. In the show, his shadow stretches across the stars. Gail Dornick, once Selden's student, wakes up after centuries in cryosleep to find the mule rising. She knows he's not just a warlord, he's a walking glitch in the system. 
A man who can crush probability itself. Even the prime radiant, the glowing cube that stores the plan, starts to falter. Its math, once clear, now flickers with confusion. Shadows in the math, Dermerzel calls it. Something is wrong, and psychohistory can't see the path ahead anymore. This is where the story of psychohistory changes. It stops being just about math and starts being about people. Gale, who once followed Selden's teachings blindly, begins to question everything. She realizes the plan was never enough. It needed a heart. It needed a choice. It needed belief. Together with Harry, or rather his many versions, some digital, some real, she helps build the second foundation on Ignis. She trains the Mentalex, people with powerful psychic abilities, who can sense and shape thoughts. They're not just followers, they're guardians. Because in a world where the mule exists, psychohistory alone won't save the galaxy. But even this new approach is fragile. When Harry stays awake for nearly 150 years, trying to prepare the mentalics while Gale sleeps, he begins to lose hope. The future is still too chaotic. The plan is off course. And the mule's influence spreads like a virus. By the time Gale wakes again, Harry is old, tired, ready to die, and she is ready to lead. A dream worth dying for. Why does this matter? Because psychohistory isn't just a science fiction idea, it's a metaphor for hope, for control, for the dream that maybe, just maybe, we can build something better, even when the world is falling apart. Harry didn't build psychohistory to gain power. He built it because he loved humanity. He saw our worst, our wars, our greed, our blindness, and still believed we were worth saving. But the cost was enormous. He manipulated people, lied to them, let some die to save the many. He turned himself into a myth, knowing he wouldn't live to see the world he was shaping. As Salvor once said to him, you have to have skin in the game. And in the end, he did. He gave everything, his mind, his body, his peace, for a future he'd never touch. Gale, too, sacrifices. She watches people she loves die. She faces visions of a future where the galaxy burns. But she keeps fighting, because she believes in something bigger than herself. And that's the real heart of psychohistory. Not the equations, not the radiant, not the vault. It's the people who keep going even when the numbers say they should give up. As the Cleons, those cloned emperors, argue, die, and fall apart, the empire crumbles. Dermerzel, the robot bound to protect them, starts questioning her own existence. What happens when your purpose no longer makes sense? What happens when the math says, you failed? And still, there's hope. Because in the shadows, the second foundation grows. Because in the chaos, Gale sends a message to Brother Dawn. Time to make yourself useful, she says. A simple line, but it holds the weight of destiny. Even enemies might join forces when faced with extinction. Even tyrants might help when the alternative is total ruin. The plan may be broken, but something new is forming. Not just math, not just faith, a fusion of both. A psychohistory that includes the unpredictable. That accounts for love, fear, anger, grief. That bends, not breaks when faced with the unknown. So, where does psychohistory go from here? No one knows, but that's kind of the point. Selden tried to write the future in stone. He almost did, but the galaxy had other plans. Now, it's up to those left behind to pick up the pieces, not to follow the plan blindly, but to adapt it, to choose when to trust the math and when to follow their hearts. And maybe, just maybe, that's what Selden wanted all along. Not to control the future, but to give us the tools to survive it. 
to believe in something bigger, to carry hope like a flame through the dark. Because no matter how far the empire falls, no matter how powerful the mule becomes, one truth remains. The future isn't fixed. The future is what we make it. And psychohistory? It's not just a science. It's a fight. A fight for tomorrow. Subscribe to keep following the plan before the next crisis arrives. Because the math may fail, but the story goes on.